That was practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You I'm, ready? Yeah, yeah. Ben, ben school Do you want a chair there? No, I'm okay. Okay. When school started, they had to build a new school for me. That's where we started, <laughs> 1930. Yeah. yeah. Hello, I'm Doug Wegman, along with Carl Brown, representing the Ole Valley Heritage Association. We're here interviewing my aunt and uncle Ruth and Lawrence Halp and my father and mother Levi and Betty Wegman about their youth, the memories and events of years ago. It is May 31st, 2017. Now you can start. <laughs> You have to tell me you told me before you didn't have it recorded. What? You have to tell me you told me before it was unrecorded. Couldn't hear. He didn't have you recorded. Oh yeah. yeah. No. But now you tell me again. Oh. <laughs> well, we went to a one room school, we and we lived up in the hill. And you had there to come late. So we would run down through always so we wouldn't be late. <laughs> And there was a pot belly stove in the middle. And uh, when they called up great, you had to go up front on a bench for your class. And we were like one big happy family in the one room school. But we had all kinds of kids. We learned to swear a little bit. And the worst licking I ever got, I used that language. and. Boy, Daddy gave it to me, <laughs> and then I was so upset that he did give me. I mean, I went out of the porch, I swore again, and he heard it. Then I got a real one. I don't swear anymore. <laughs> okay, Lawrence, you want to tell us about your growing up where you were? Well, we were on the farm. We'd be hard to have a I never went to the one room school. And uh, like I say, my dad died and he didn't go anywhere. WPA, you saw him clean. What? You saw him clean the WPA off the beds. The you always said they used shovels to clean. Oh, yeah. When it snowed, we had to all go out and shovel till it was open. No, I meant. In your school, it wasn't all finished. You said they were cleaning well, off with shovels. Yes, yeah, when we started in school, it was the soccer field that people were out there with pick and shovel to level off the ground. You wouldn't see that do that anymore. No. Today. <laughs> there was no bulldozers or anything like that. Look, we were just here, so a couple of things. Uh, like I said, my first job was at home on the farm. Then I was in the army for 28 months. Then I came home and my dad said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I said, i got to get a job. He said, well, you can start working from here for $25 a week. I said, okay, no problem. And uh, I worked for uh, two months for $25 a week, and then I got married. Then I got fifty dollars for me. <laughs> <laughs> you but, need a double then. <laughs> but the worst part is, my wife worked as a topper over in the knitting mill. She made more money than I did. Yeah. <laughs> Those are such a, a few of the things I looked at here. As far as the dentist is concerned, we were eight children. We didn't know what a dentist looked like, and uh, of course I had bad teeth and at the age of uh, age of. Uh, 16, I got my teeth pulled and I played in ever since. Mm. So that was one of the things that that time. And you hardly ever had a doctor. No, we didn't have Mom yet. got us over everything. <laughs> we had Dr. Um, in Uli, Grimm. Dr. Grimm was our doctor of a mule, but, but, but uh, Dr. Berlin was a, a doctor that brought us into the world. Old, old, old Berlin. Getting back to the one room school, we both went to one room school. I went there until I was in eighth grade. And, yeah, uh, it was pretty many awakenings in the one room school. And uh, every two years, it was. <laughs> we had Neoma Garrett. Now, if you know Neoma Garrett, Neoma Garrett was uh, our first teacher. 
and uh, she was on the school board. When I, I got on the school board. So well, when I graduated from eighth grade, Neil McGarrett took me, it was only two of us in eighth grade, took both of us to Crystal Cave. We never saw Crystal Cave or anything. And bought me my first Sunday. We stopped at Quidstown Diner and she bought us each a Sunday there. I was a good teacher. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Then another thing came to my mind, and I know Lawrence will never forget this. He, Lawrence had got a brand new tractor. And he was up here in the hill fields driving along the road and he didn't see a bump. And he upset the tractor and the tractor rolled down the hill, brand new John Deere. Brand new. Brand new. It would ride all the way down the hill, tumble, tumble, tumble. <laughs> and uh, i never forget that. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't either. <laughs> I, did you ever get it fixed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, get it fixed? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had that tractor a long time. Okay, that's one other thing. Now, another thing I just look at here. We didn't have electricity until 1937, I believe. 1937, they, they came and said, we're going to give you electricity. And we had a man come out, he wired everything up for us. And then uh, we finished and they brought the lines in. And they said, now just let the poles burn a couple of days, you won't put the lead on yet. <laughs> so that, that from there, then we had electricity. We did not have an inside bathroom. So we, we didn't had, have the phone either until I got no, married. But there we had an outhouse, if you know what an outhouse is. It's a, it's a little room outside the old lawn. <laughs> Well, this one right out here. Yes, yeah, and it's the same. <laughs> he lived here, and I did not. Right, you know that. You remember that. All right, Ruth, tell us about working at the Berkey again. Well, when I got out of high school, I got a job at the Berkey, and I only got $8 a week. And I had to give Daddy four. And to go to work, I had to give Harold Moyer a dollar. So that left me three dollars, and to come home, I had to go in the trolley to Penn Street, and then get the Jacksonville bus, and then I had to walk from there home. And I worked there about two years, but it, I didn't earn much. I didn't have much. <laughs> I wasn't too happy about that job. But I worked at Crisonia Park. There I got paid real good. And um, what did you do there? What did you work I at? I worked two different things. We worked at the bingo stand, and then uh, I worked where we made waffles and mm -hmm. ice cream. Two jobs there, two different years. I worked at the at the playground also. I worked for my uncle, Uncle Eddie, Edward Hick, and he had a game there. Tito, Mussolini, and Stalin. Three heads. And you paid, I think it was a nickel a ball. And you got, I got three or four balls for a nickel or something like that. And you try and knock the head off. And if you knock the head off, then you got a prize. <laughs> and uh, I remember my, uh, my, he was my uncle. He said, Levi, you got to talk more. You got to holler at it. Get them coming in. <laughs> but anyhow, I worked there for two summers with it. And uh, it was a beautiful place for Sonia Park. I, I just can't believe. But Cotson Moy owned it and he never painted or fixed them and that man was killed and there was bang. They had to close it up. And he was killed, what? Yeah. Because he didn't keep everything up, it was their fault. For Sonia Park's oh. fault. Oh. Um, you know, when they built this house, they said the bricks came out to pull the line of the trolley car. Yeah. And they had to bring them to the top here with the cars and buggy. It was 1916. Yeah. Yeah. And you said you had a ride on the trolley, right? I had a ride in the trolley. Mom took me along to Reading. And I enjoyed it. I was big enough to remember it. I remember you know how long the trolley lasted. I know I remember Mum, we took Mum out to the trolley car past Besson Land Park. She had to pick a man to go up to, to Reading. And I don't know how we got our back. I think 1931 was the last day of rain. I think it was 1931. Is that when it was? That's when it was the last day of rain. I remember riding. 
Before he started, yeah. I think in the, I think it was around 1915 when it started. Yeah. It's very around 15 years. Did you oh, remember? Yeah, I remember. I, ne I didn't know any of you, you know, but, but you, this trolley came down at the, uh, on the other side of the creek. Yeah. And, uh, and then run up to yeah. uh, Jackson Wall. It was happy memories. It's a shame it didn't last longer. Yeah. Then they had trouble getting gays and stuff. How nice it would have been if we would have had the trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you raised on your farms back then? We had yeah. all kinds of grains, and uh, I, I don't the farms remember this yet, but I still remember this. And Uncle Will owned the farm here, this farm here, and all these fields going up the hill here yeah. were farmed. And my dad said he often, oh many times, he'd cradle the grain. He'd cradle the grain, and then they'd tie up in uh, bundles, sheets, yeah, in sheets, and then they haul it in the barn floor. And you put everything in, it. whatever came first, when first, and the oats came last. And then you get a, you get uh, Pepper Olinger. His name is Pepper Olinger, and he had a slash machine. And uh, in the first years, he had used horses to bring it up. Later on, he got a tractor. But the first years, he came at a, at a thrashing time, and he'd bring this little thrash machine up there, and uh, some would have to go in the straw mile. If they put it in a straw mine, they have to tread it down. And uh, but you, you did the oats first, then uh, I think uh, the wheat came in in the first of the last to get thrashed. But we put it on the barn floor and stack them top of each other and they put the thrash machine right alongside the outside of the big barn door and put the the stack will be into the straw shed and into the straw bag then. And then you thrash by hand. And before we had electric, we had, everything was quiet. You had no radio or nothing. And I said about Uncle Hen, used to, you used to hear him come up the hill with his mouth organ playing. And another thing, do you remember when Aunt Sue and Uncle Milk came up? We heard the horses had bells on and they came up in a sleigh in the snow. Yeah. And. Uh, Mom quick got the ice cream cane out and we quick made a cane of ice cream. We really had a fun night that night. You always did with Uncle Milton Anson. What kind of livestock did you have? Well, we had, uh, we had everything. We had a couple of cows. We had pigs. We had chickens. We had ducks. We had horses. We had horses. I did everything that time. It's just like the food trees. That time, area, all the farmers or the people that lived in the valley here, if they had a little orchard, they had one of each kind in it. And uh, we had bulgur apples, we had delicious apples, and we had uh, a certain kind of peaches. And I remember we had a certain strawberry, it was called Corsican. Yeah. That was the sweetest strawberry that was ever made, but it would rot overnight. You know, now they, they uh, they have them so integrated that they don't rot the face. And during the Depression, we got the Sears book always. That's where Mom sent for a lot of stuff and that. And there was a little typewriter in there for two ninety eight. And I said to Mom, oh, I'd like a typewriter. And then she said, well, you go pick those black cherries, and if we can make enough pies to sell at market and make enough money, you can get one. Well, we only got cherries for four pies. They were 15 cents a piece, so it was only 60 cents. <laughs> so I never got a typewriter. And it was depression. I never had a doll either, but I was happy. We had a very happy family. I know two people that had one cow, and they sent milk to the dairy. Lawrence Trumbull and Mars Mathias. I can't believe that he yeah. And they made a living on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that time the the creamery, the creamery was here at early night. and uh, I don't know when that closed. They were still running when I was little, but that might have been closed in what 30, 35 or eight, yeah. the creamery. Was, and that it, I think they took the milk in on the on the trolley. Yeah. They took the, the milk on the trolley into into the dairy, and I think it was St. Lawrence Dairy that time. Yeah, I think so that too. Took, that took the thing. 
I think all around here is sent to St. Lawrence Dairy. Oh, I mean, and another thing we had, we had F. Beaver's Mill, the old grist mill down here with F. Beaver. And uh, we'd always take our, our corn down there and he'd turn grind up for a corn chop. And that time he wasn't uh, balanced feed. We made chicken, a uh, uh, pig slop, and you had a couple of one group of mid middlings, and you had a corn chop, and you mix that together in water, and you pour it in the cement in the in the trough. iron iron trough, and that's what the pigs ate for to be got them big. So what you do on weekends? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing on a Sunday. But we always had company to eat on a Sunday on yes, the farm. We, we had a lot of company coming to eat, on a, especially from the city. And we had a good childhood. Uh, a lot of kids would come on a Sunday. Oh, when Pearl Harbor, was, when they struck Pearl Harbor, that was on a Sunday. And uh, I know that Warren Beaver and I were riding our bicycle. And that time you didn't hear the news like you do now. We just heard they bombed Pearl Harbor. I think we might have had a radio at that time. And, uh, from that, yeah, that was a Sunday, yeah. Yeah, it was a Sunday. I remember Warren Beaver and I were riding bicycles. That's what we did in the Sunday in the summertime, ride bicycle. You ever go over to Yellow House, the auction? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we went to the auction. Up back. Five points. Yeah, five points. And it was March on five points. Yeah. That's my yellow house. And that time they come in there with a big, big truckloads of watermelons, and you buy them back of the truck. And, uh, we all like watermelons, yes. and we still do. <laughs> and yellow house was strong, was strong that time. Oh, that time yellow house was strong. Yeah, yellow house was strong. Yeah. And then we had the Wheel Line Hotel. And that was running that time. I think years ago we were much happier than the kids today. I mean, we had fun. We enjoyed Sundays. I know one Sunday we had a lot of comedy. Do you remember that? We went up uh, up to our top field and right at the end of our top field was a log cabin and they made moonshine in there. And he had an old truck there. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember. And Bobby Brown was with, and he goes and he clanks in this truck, and pretty soon we hear shots coming, <laughs> and we all ran down the hill home to <laughs> things you don't yeah. forget. On a Sunday afternoon, we all group together, played ball. Yeah, yeah. that was nice. Well, you were the home run slugger. Yeah. <laughs> and all our kids and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren, they all love baseball. I guess it's all from him. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I remember, now I didn't see it, but I remember talking about that time. Down here at Oli Line, right across from John Snyder's farm, now it, it was. John owns it, it's not the big farm, it's the one right, the one right along the Turnpike Road. I don't know who the farmer was anymore, but he had two horses. Oh, yeah. And they that was Earl Keller. Was it Earl Keller? Yeah. And they fell into a sinkhole. And yeah. they had to shoot the horses, they couldn't get them out. And I think on Matt with these tractors in that field, our Matt farms that now. Yeah. I, I often pray that he's safe. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to tell us how farm equipment evolved from when you were young to what it is today? Uh, how long do you have more experience in that than I have? Well, my I, mom said they started a farm at $98. <laughs> That's how they had to start farming. I remember so many belts that they had before they had this big machine. We will. Do you remember, Daddy, you did so much with the bills. How was for the truck? I, I, I guess yeah, that pulleys. Yeah. Pulleys. Yeah. But we had, we had a great big garden, and I mean big, a couple of acres. Yeah. And we'd go to the Reading Market. Daddy worked hard in his garden. I remember one week, we picked 56 bushels of string beans. And Harold Schaefer, 
I shave his feet hot, feast, feast or that, not feet, uh, feet seeds. Arm shaver, you lived over at, uh, uh, not Ryan Holes, it's over in that area. And I remember he came down one time and he wanted to take a picture of these beans. So he gets a big stalk out and not quite a little bean hanging on. He said, now wait a minute. And he started hanging on by loose shit. <laughs> so they looked like a whole lot of string beans on the one yeah. stalk. Yeah. Well, he yeah. had water when it was dry. I'll get the spring. He'd make a ditch all the way down. One day would be in this row, the next day in that row. And it's there today yet. Yeah. Which has that spring up there and it's hooked up to the barn yet, the water still runs. Yeah. I just had another a very good spring. Runs by Friday, but it's concluded they can't drink the water. But uh, he said it's still running. And uh, now that for us, we got more running water in the house because it ran by gravity. Mm -hmm. Now we had no bathroom, but we did have running water, which is tremendous help. Yeah, we never had a bathroom all the while I lived home. No. And then we had that a, came after. For heat, we had a wood stove. Yeah. And uh, in the little house we call the kitchen, there we had the wood stove running all the time. In the living room, Sometimes you never had heat for a couple of days in there, but because we, we slept in the second floor. But you had no water, nothing to freeze, no so it didn't freeze. matter. But uh, it was uh, five bedrooms, and there were uh, there were eight children, so the four, uh, eight, uh, six boys, and uh, there were two girls. So the two girls had one room, and uh, Marion and Robert had one room, and Savannah and I had another one. And Harold and Daniel had the other one. So, uh, the house was full. And then I used, to, I, I used to trap that time. And uh, I never forget, I came out there one morning, and there's a it's on the on the high field up towards Essex. And I had that trap there, I could not catch what was in there. So I think I put four or five traps there. And I came up the next morning, and here I had a great big red fox. And I got five dollars for it. Yeah. <laughs> Made the big money. That was yeah. big money that time, yeah. yeah. That day. Even the skunks were worth pretty yeah. much. Yeah. There were a lot of things that I I you're talking <laughs> family life, I got back to your mind. I remember my dad used to go to market on Tuesday. Well if you had too much uh, string beans or too much corn or anything, a market was from uh, six to twelve, kissing a market. Then he'd take the truck and we go up and start on 13th Street and we go from door to door and knock on the doors and uh, sell our corn and uh, oh we had a regular route. People used to wait for us to, to buy this stuff. And I know Daddy came home one time and he said, Leo, I said, go out there. I said, I started loading that truck out there. I said, okay, I'm an artist, so I'm going it. And here he bought me a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first bicycle. He, he bought that from uh, Al Wiest. Well, it was John Wiest's bicycle. You remember John Wiest, don't you? Yeah. You remember John Wiest. But yeah. anyhow, Al Wiest is... Uh, well, was, Al uh, Wiest grew up right over here. Yeah, right on Wiest. Yeah. Wiest grew up. Wiest grew up. Wiest grew up. Now, can you tell us what you did special for the holidays? The different holidays? Well, Christmas. We were so happy we'd get up early for an orange and a block of clear candy on a stick. And I used to cut a dress and the boys usually cut a white shirt. And what did you get for Christmas? I didn't have to get it, wasn't much. <laughs> <laughs> but what you got you were so happy for. Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of things in those days that uh Coming back to memory, you, you think back over them. Daddy used to buy chicken from all the farmers here in the valley. And uh, some used to raise farm just for him, and others had like a farmyard flock, and they'd maybe sell 25 or 30 chickens at a time and take them up, and then Daddy would buy them and we'd kill them. So he had a guy came up there, he had chickens one day, and uh, I think he had two coops. And, uh, Daddy bought him and paid him for him, and he said, can you use more? And I said, yeah, I can use some next week. And he said, what kind are they? 
He says, well, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those are things that happen to me. <laughs> Daddy said, I'm buying some of my chickens two times. <laughs> they stole some of Daddy's, too. There's always people you can get jobs up. I remember picking potatoes for Hen Harry. Six cents a bushel. That's right. You had to make pick a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. I used to pick potatoes for Reiners. Yeah, and that time you were in this farm, in this bit, this long field down here, they had the potatoes. And I you thought you'd never get to the end. Yeah, to the end. <laughs> then, you, then you got it in, it was two dollars a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember you being here living here, but I remember Harold was here to see her. Yeah. Harold, Harold Pressman. Yeah. And then we had, if we needed uh, any kind of repair of materials or tools, that time Jay Keane was in business. He's, he's, he's over in the, he was in Oli that, uh, you know where he was? You know where you want to say that. Just so, off Main Street there in yeah, Ole. Right off yeah. Main Street. So we go over there to take Keen and we get all our whatever we needed for supplies. And then up in the other corner of Main Street in Ole, we had Charlie Glaze. Do you remember Charlie Glaze? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Glaze was uh, <laughs> he was the uh, storekeeper and uh, he carried anything and everything also. And uh, well, I think Lawrence always said you didn't have much income tax in that day, but it was no. only three people, say. I remember there was only three people that paid tax, you know, you know mm -hmm. George Graham, Jake Keane, and Charlie Tate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That changed. And could you buy dynamite at Glaze's store? No, no, where did you buy dynamite? I used to buy dynamite. He, he bought it at Lime Box. Yeah, I guess it was Lime Box. Yeah. I bought, on top of the hill here where Bradley lives, I bought that piece of land up there, and uh, I wanted to put a bungalow up there where Bradley's house is now. And that was so steep up there that you couldn't get up to it. So, um, and at the top there were boulders. They were giant boulders. And uh, I know I bought dynamite, and my dad showed me how to do it. He made a mud pack on top of the dynamite. Just put the, put the dynamite on the on the stone and you made it wet, made everything wet and made that airtight. And then you, you had a fuse on it and you hang a cord on and a, a fuse, I mean the, the string or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you'd run away, you'd go in and you'd Light go it and run. <laughs> <laughs> and In that day, anybody could on. buy dynamite. Yeah, that time you could. I dynamite a lot of Do you remember when Arthur Howard's out here and uh, Merrill Hedrick had dynamite? Yeah. No, they, they, they dynamite it too. They put nitrogen uh, in. Oh, not, 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 not is, Yeah, all the wind is in the only line for crack. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a loud bang. Everybody around here heard it. <laughs> well, things were different then. I remember. Yeah. Uh, to get to Bradley's house, getting back to that, that thing there, it was so steep that you couldn't, you could have on going hands and knees to get up there. So I went back to uh, to Honda Plaza, <coughs> Honda Plaza. So Honda, can you put a road up there? And he said, yeah. So he came down with the bulldozer, and he worked about uh, half a day, and he pulled out, and he went down here to. Uh, Stapleton's store, he, put, he took the cell out in that house. That's where he, he took the cell out. And I went down and said, I said, hey, Honda, you're not finished. And he said, well, yeah, I'll come back. I said, oh, he said, never mind, I'll be here. So I went, I went to Tiefenderfers. Did you ever hear Tiefenderfers? St. Lawrence. Yeah, they, they were excavators. And I said, and they, they, didn't go, they didn't go to college, but they knew that stuff. So I said, Dan, said, well, Dan and John John at the time, I said, can we put a road up to the top of that hill there? And he walked around and said, yeah, I said, we can put one up there. I said, do you have any idea what it would cost? Oh, he said, maybe uh, $1,500. He said, around $1,500. So I said, 
so I said, okay, go ahead and do it. And he did it. And when I got the bill, the bill was $800. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was... Uh, you know, I died, died in 1933. 33, right. And the undertaker came from Potsdam, did everything for $300. $300. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, That, that, okay, 19, 1949 is when I built my house up here. And we got all the lumber from the uh, Riker. Amanda's Riker's dad. And they were cutting the timbers for the house. And uh, a limb came back and knocked him over the head and killed him. Mm. That was Amanda's Riker's dad. And then? A limb, a limb came back, a tree fell down and a limb broke off and that was like an arrow. Killed him right in the spot. And where'd you get the stones at? My stones from my house came all from uh, Rockland Township. That's right down there near uh, Little Boxville. Before you get to Little Boxville there. But Joe Hardline, he lived down there too. As, as you go, I go back to the road past the uh, the gunning club. And there to the right is where they oh yeah, they had that not that hill was full of stones. And that time it was fifteen dollars a ton delivered. Today I think you might pay hundred and fifty dollars a ton for stones like that. And I first started selling for fertilizer here. Yeah. You used to get it for forty nine dollars a ton. A ton. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Things are really inflated. Now, Betty, your daddy worked at St. Lawrence, didn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. At the dairy? No, she worked oh. at the Ocean Mill. Oh. Daddy. Your daddy. Yeah, he no, he was a weaver. Well, it was a weaver. It wasn't a hosiery, though. Oh, it, it was a broombox. Broombox. Oh. It was yeah. a broombox. Broombox. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was right down <coughs> here at the uh, yeah. the chat was St. Lawrence. And now we don't have none of those no more. No. No, it's a shame. Not. I don't know what they do with that big building. Do they use that? The building? I think a click owns one of them. That is from Bach Mills in St. Lawrence. And the other one, I don't know. I think Dr. German, I believe, had bought the other one. He built a, he has a house right next. Did you play any games when you were young, other than like baseball and oh, softball yeah. and stuff? When you got company, <coughs> that's all you did, or board games. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, you had a lot of bunch, uh, a lot Even of fun with a 10 cent bunch ball and a broom handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just see on here, it says school activities. Even the one room school, we yeah. played a lot of games. Well, we played volleyball. Yeah. You have a soft sponge ball, and you have two sides on either side of the building. Yeah. And if you, you throw the ball over the roof, and whoever catches it, will run around the corner to the next side, and as soon as you came there, you had a freeze. Yeah. And then they try and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that with my grandchildren over the wash house. <laughs> I enjoyed my grandchildren. Well, we got over half an hour, I guess okay. that's...